Uh, thank you very much, Speaker. My question is to the Minister of Community Safety and Correctional Services. Bargaining talks between the province and correctional officers and staff continued over the weekend without results. There is a cost that comes from failing to reach an agreement. During one weekend this month, correctional officers didn't sign up for voluntary overtime. As a result, the province is said to have paid its managers to be on call all weekend at a cost of about $600,000. In May, we learned that the province had spent millions of dollars to prepare for strikes months before negotiations ever began. Speaker, how much money has the province spent to date due to the government's failure to secure a deal with correction staff over a year of negotiation. Question. Thank you. Minister of Community Safety and Correctional and Services. Well, thank you very much, Speaker. I thank the member opposite uh, for the question. I'm a bit uh, uh, puzzled by the question because I, I take it he wants to intervene in a collective bargaining process, Speaker, that is taking place right now. I'm sure he will be the first one to counsel me not to engage in, in collective bargaining in the floor of the legislature. Speaker, we should respect uh, the, the process that is ongoing. Uh, both sides are working hard. We are very proud, Speaker, that we were able to reach uh, uh, an uh, agreement which was ratified uh, with uh, OPSU on the, on the unified and on the central table, and the corrections table continues to, to work hard. In the meantime, Speaker, we take the health and safety of, inmate, of our inmates and our staff very seriously, and we'll continue to make sure uh, that our correctional facilities uh, yes, are safe at all times and services are being provided uh, to the inmates um, uh, through uh, appropriate thank you. staff. Supplementary. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. You know, again, I, I would encourage the government to be continue to bargain in good faith, something that we don't believe is happening. Unfortunately, years of liberal mismanagement has led to crisis in corrections. This has significantly impact, impacted the relationship between correctional staff and the province. Staff have made numerous complaints about dangerous conditions and facilities and have raised the alarm that our correctional facilities are understaffed. In return, correctional officers have been ignored. Even worse, some of them have been instructed by the government to stay quiet. Ontario's correctional officers and staff feel disrespected by this government. Speaker, when will your ministry, Minister, when will your Question. ministry show Ontario's correctional, parole, and probational officers the respect that they deserve? Thank you. Minister. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you, Speaker. I think, Speaker. The question is a, is, a, is a serious question. It is an important question that has been that has been asked, and I want to I want to give a, a serious response to the the member opposite and and all members. Uh, Speaker, we take our responsibility in terms of our correctional staff very very seriously. We want to make sure that they are pro properly trained and they are properly staffed because our correctional workers, Speaker, are the front line when it comes to providing uh, appropriate services around rehabilitation and reintegration uh, for the offenders who are, are in our care and custody. And that is why, Speaker, we've been working very hard since 2013 in, in, in an accelerated fashion, rehiring of correctional officers and probation and parole officers. In fact, Speakers, we have hired almost 500 new correctional Answer. officers uh, in our, in our, uh, in our uh, institution, and we continue to engage in robust hiring as well. In fact, there's Thank about you. 100 correctional officers being trained at the Corrections College as Thank we you. speak. Speaker.